Everybody, Eric here from Tea and Tobacco, and as you can read, yes, I have been laid off from my job, so I am currently unemployed. <laughs> so I will be doing a lot more on this channel. Uh, just if you are watching this as a VOD, just uh, check in for a few minutes. Just want to say a few things. If you'd like to support this channel to keep it going, you should head over to my subscribe start is down below. We have some, I switched up some levels. There are some new rewards and whatnot. We have t-shirt designs that are heading to the printer tomorrow. So I will show those. Those will be uh, uh, up on subscribe star probably tomorrow. So you'll at least be able to see the designs. We have a couple of designs. If you stick around later, I'll, I'll import them into my, my streaming software so I can actually, you know, show them to everybody on the stream but definitely check out the subscribe star it is in the link down in the description head over to our discord as well link is also down in the description come hang out with us um, and all that fun stuff i am looking to get everything set up so it can be good as possible and i'll be making a ton of content starting tomorrow because i have nothing else to do right now so i will be making a lot of content i have a massive list already of uh how to stuff so i have some uh i don't know maybe like 30 plus videos i plan on making that are not just reviews of pipes and cigars. Um, some of them have actually been made. I'm gonna remake some stuff as well. Hey, what's up, Jason? Thanks for joining. Um, how's it going on, Bex? Um, so yeah, I'll be doing a whole bunch of stuff over the next, um, you know, the next, well, for as long as I can do it. Um, yeah, Bex, definitely uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, the, it's uh, called Tea and Tobacco. That uh, That is where all of those videos will be over on the YouTube channel. So yeah, should be good. So I have, I'm have i going to redo basically my entire How to Smoke a Pipe video series. So I'll be doing that. I'll be doing a full cigar series. Um, some of the tea stuff I'll leave. I'm just going to add on to it. Hey, Garrett. Okay, got it. Um, and then, yeah, I, everybody. See, people need to use the, like the same, uh, same alias across platforms. Then they'll know who the heck I'm talking to. Because some people, some people use so many different uh, uh, tags. So uh, let me drop this actually into the Discord because I am live right now, and I need to let my everybody know that I am live because. That'd be good. Um, hey, what's up, James? How's it going? Um, so yeah, uh, like I said, t-shirts are coming. I have, I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of videos this week. And subscribe star, I moved everything over there. You can still use Patreon if you want, but uh, there's only one level there because Patreon is kind of uh, anti everything this channel is. So I moved over to subscribe star. But nobody has moved over with me yet. Hopefully, that will change soon, since I will be going pretty hardcore. Um, how's it going, James? Uh, the that corner one coffee has not come back into stock, and I'm a little bummed about it. And my wife is really bummed about it. So I might have to find her a new coffee that's comparable to make cold brew out of. So let me know because. <laughs> she's she's like jonesing for some good cold brew coffee like she just we just bought some beans at the store of a random brand that was like a medium roast and she is not happy so we need we need the corner one coffee to come back or we need to find a comparable thing um so anyways um i don't even know what to talk about because Obviously, a lot of people are watching this live, but uh, for those who watch VOD, uh, I think that pretty much covers it. I've been laid off from my main job. I will be working on tea and tobacco and all my other projects pretty heavily. Go subscribe to those other ones as well. The links, oh crap, I need to put those in the description, but I do a, a wrestling podcast. It's called That's Wrestling. I also do gaming uh, on a channel called Zoic's Dark. So definitely check those out and yeah we'll be good so let's go to the live uh already we have jason i want to branch into full english blends any tips 
Uh, yeah, I guess it depends on what you're looking for and what you currently smoke, and then we can probably send you in a a direction that will be good for you. Um, like if you're already a cigar guy, you can just go headlong. I'd say go you go headlong into uh, full English blends because they. I find most people who are coming from cigars really like the English blends. Um, tends to be pretty uh, very very popular, and then you can try you know other stuff as well. But uh, let us know where you're coming from, and then we can direct you so we don't. Um, you know, blow you up real, real quick. <laughs> but I'm like a full, you know, lat bomb type of blend guy myself. Yeah, Garrett says he went right to heavy English blends from cigars. I'm the same, but that's what drew me the most. Uh, can anybody let me know if the background music is too loud or if it's uh, mixed at the right level? It's just hanging out there in the background. Because <laughs> in my monitors it's loud, but I have it turned down on the stream, so I'm not listening to this direct stream at the moment. Uh, let's see if I got it out. All right. <laughs> I will save this image and I'll upload it as the uh, thumbnail because it's awesome. Uh, let's see. I get here. In tobacco. Save. Alright, and I'll edit. Change the thumbnail. Now I should have a fun thumbnail that that Sparky made for me. He makes all of my thumbnails and does a great job. Then smoke in medium English for six months. Oh, yeah, so you just want to go heavier Latakia? If you want to go heavier Latakia, hey, what's up, Noah? Hey, what's up, Duck? Um, if you want to go heavier Latakia, yeah, uh, Pirate Cake is 75% Latakia. Uh, there's also 10 Russians, uh, uh, two friends, 10 Russians. It's 50% Latakia, so those are both heavy. Yeah, Star of the East is another super heavy Latakia based blend um, from Cornell and Deal. So, yeah. Pirate Cake, I love. Star of the East, uh, Flake, and just the regular Star of the East is, is massive. Um, smoking it right now? Nice. I don't know what I'm going to break out just yet. I have a few things sitting on my desk right here i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen i uh sixteen i have sixteen blends around my desk right now um that are all going to be reviewed um soon um that's what i'll be working on hey what's up todd and that is where i'm going to start because these are all things that are currently in jar oh makes that i got one more on my desk um i have to get stronger blends to taste anything honestly had to give up the hobby for a while though oh, that's a bummer <clears throat> trying to start my cellar <laughs> yeah so basically anything that i already have jarred up that i haven't reviewed yet uh those are going to be the first one so like i said i got about 17 of them i have actually three different briar works uh, that I'm going to check out. I have another fourth. I got two fourth gens. I have the Amphora Full. I have the John Cotton Smyrna. Uh, John Cotton uh, Number One. I also have Esoterica Scarborough. I have Esoterica Stonehaven. I have Esoterica Brighton. I have Kamoy's cask number four, which actually is going to be my first one because somebody asked for it. And uh, I got G&H Rum Twist. I have F&K Lancer Slices. Um, I think I've already reviewed this. Have I reviewed Peterson Irish Oak? I think I have. 
Uh, so that's just a. Uh, uh, anyways, I got five brothers on here. Uh, ta -ta -ta, Garrett. A bacon old fashioned? Yes, I do have bacon old fashioned. Todd, yes, Stonehaven is good. So let's see if I can. Yeah, that's that's a funny picture. Uh, da, da, da. So yeah, I will be reviewing all types of stuff. I'll try to get as much filmed as possible. I just, yeah, like I said, I just got a ton of stuff I'm working on and hopefully I can start earning some people's support during this time while I have a no job. <laughs> Cause you know, actually let me, these aren't nearly as annoying as my, as my big cans. So I'll just switch out. Is my puppy in here? Oh yeah, she is. She's sleeping on the floor behind me. Uh, yeah. So what's uh what's going on with everybody? It's it was like ninety some odd ninety five degrees outside right now. It's really freaking hot. I am trying to decide what to throw in a pipe here. You feel for me with the bacon old fashioned? I haven't tried it yet. I have it. It's open. I sniffed it when I first got it in. Um, so it's actually, it's actually four years old at this point. So let's see. Uh, let's see what it's like. Still pretty much smells the same. It doesn't smell too bad. It has a kind of a vinegary smell to it. Man, I think COVID screwed us on Esoterica Blends this quarter. Probably. Wouldn't be surprised. Noah been busy doing odd jobs for family. Uh, let's see. I'm going to need to subscribe and like the stream. Bye. See you at 6 p.m. if you're still... What time zone are you in? Because it's 8.20 now. <laughs> But uh, I have a feeling I will probably be streaming for at least another hour, most likely. So we will see. But yeah, don't uh, make sure not to not to miss. Uh, what latency do I have set up here? Low. Okay, so I'm probably only r running about 15 seconds behind here. Do not. <laughs> I don't remember where Duck is from, if he even said. I'm not sure if I've seen him anymore before. Briar Club. Hey, how's it going over on the Twitch? Or across the pond? Across the pond, he would be way farther ahead on us. Even if he is in Japan, it would be like 8 in the morning, not <laughs> anywhere near 6 p.m. Sorry you've been laid off. It sounds as though you'll be productive in the meantime. Been in the same boat since mid-April. But yeah, that kind of sucks. Yep, I will try to be productive as possible over on my YouTube. And um, I'll probably be doing more Twitch stuff as well. Get back into streaming some more gaming and whatnot. I've just been, you know, wrapping up the past few weeks at my job. So I've just been kind of busy live in the US, so I guess I'll see you at 9 p.m. Yes, I will still be on, so I'm guessing you're just West Coast. Did, uh, I forgot, did you review Haunted Bookshop? I have not reviewed Haunted, Haunted Bookshop. Let me even see if it's in my inventory. Um, uh, it is not even in my inventory. So I don't even have a tin of it. 
So, not sure when that's going to get done. <laughs> See you later, duck. Uh, but yes. So, I do not have any haunted bookshop. I don't have any in stock. I have not had it before. So, I will have to get some at some point. Also, you can send it to me if you want. Um, <laughs> anything that gets sent to me gets uh, put to the top of the pile for for review status. But, you know. Uh, Alright, so let's decide what I'm going to throw in my pipe this evening. Let's see, I am going to let's see, make a little pile here on what I'd like. And you guys can direct me here. Uh, all right, so of the stuff that I have out, I'll let you guys um, pick. Let me narrow it down to a couple here. All right, so let's go. I have FNK Lancer Slices. John Cotton Smyrna, I have Briarworks Unsweet Tea, and Esoterica Scarborough. So we got two Englishes and two Virginias. So um, Esoterica Scarborough, Briarworks Unsweet Tea, John Cotton Smyrna, and F and K Lancer Slices. What, what do you guys uh, call on that one? All right, we got one for Smyrna and one for Esoterica. So we got a tie running at the moment. I'll give it uh, five minutes before uh, or until I get 10 people are watching right now. So until I get 10 votes or four minutes pass. That's the second one for the Esoterica. But, uh, Briar Club says Esoterica, so that's three for the Esoterica. Todd wants the bacon old fashioned. <laughs> uh, sorry, that is not in the list of what I'd like to smoke this evening, so. <laughs> Want to send you some blends from my brick and mortar to see what you think. They have some pretty awesome Vulcan, have no idea who blended it. James says Smyrna. All right, so we got two for Smyrna and two for the Esoterica. Oh, sorry. We got, yeah, 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 we got three for the Esoterica and two for the Smyrna. So not much of a landslide yet. Still got time. Come on, Smyrna. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can uh, bring up some of those pictures here. Um... Let's, uh, did I even download them from? I don't even think I downloaded them off of Discord just yet. Let me pull those. Save. Documents. So here is one shirt that is being worked on. Where are you? You are up here. So there's one shirt that we have. My wife votes Smyrna and is watching with me. All right, well, I'll take you for your word on that one. So we are we are we are neck and neck between the Smyrna and Esoterica. So uh Todd, you need to change your vote to uh 
to Smyrna or Esoterica. Todd, Todd's gonna be the uh, Todd's gonna be the, the the tying vote here. So I vote. Uh, I'd have to pick Briar Club. I gotta pick the pipe once I know if I'm going with the uh, with the English or am I going for the Virginia? And then I will pick out a pipe. So yeah, here's uh, one of my, here's the one design that has come up and then let me pull, we got another one for the cigar folks. Still don't have a, he's still working on a T1. We have a few ideas kicking around, but I will show you this cigar one that we have. Save that. Save image. Downloads. Save. So there's that one. And then the other. Oh, that got so much bigger. They shrink that. There's the other one. All right, so we're down to voting on Smyrna or Esoterica Scarborough. And then I will uh, I'll give you some options on pipes. <laughs> but uh, here's the t-shirt for the, uh, the, the cigar fans. So we got a cigar themed one and then the pipe themed one. And then we got a bunch of shirts for uh, That's Wrestling that have come out really good. Looking forward to those. Todd says Sesoterica. All right, so we are going with the Virginia Bone Scarborough. I have a giant jar of it because I I don't even know if it comes in tins or does it only come in the eights, the eight ounces. I think it only comes in the eight ounces. All right, so let me go grab a Virginia... Um, Virginia pipe. Alrighty, so I should probably grab an ashtray as well. That would probably and some. Oh, jeez, I am just see. I'm I'm not set up tonight. Let me grab. Let me grab a box of matches too. Matches, ashtray. All right, so for pipes this evening, we have, yeah, kill the t-shirt here. We have, I'll have to hold it back. This is my Ehrlich freehand. This thing's a freaking monster, giant beast, a giant piece of wood. So I got the Ehrlich. I have my Winslow crowned Viking here, or the uh, Bent Brandy. This is one of my favorite pipes. And then I have a good old Pipes Unlimited Canadian. What do people think? Canadian, the Bent Brandy, or the Freehand.
No, uh, the trademark pipe. What, what, which one's the trademark pipe? Because, uh... No one's going for the freehand. I don't think I've had this in many videos at all. I don't think I've used it a ton on, on any videos. Uh-oh, we got the Bent Brandy in the freehand. Jason's going for the freehand. Freehander. Freehand, the uh, Ehrlich or the Winslow. Oh man, and now... <laughs> now Kilted Briar Club's coming in. See it on the title screen. Uh, the title screens that you normally are going to see, that, uh, let's see. The title screen doesn't have a pipe in it. If you see it on thumbnails, that is actually my Stanwell, um, Stanwell Bishop, which I am not sure where it is at this moment. Um, that is the Stanwell Bishop that you normally see, uh, which I don't know where it is. Oh, it's back where I normally take pictures. I'm guessing this is the one that you normally see. This is my Stanwell Bishop that is pretty much in all the uh, thumbnails of all the reviews. But this is, uh, this is uh, a Latkia pipe. All right, we are going with the Aralek. They're, they're a local. Well, they were local when they were open. Um, they're local to me, at least. Or local-ish. They were based out of Boston. <sighs> Smells like... Smells like uh, hay with a hit of a little bit of grape in there. Mm, it smells really good. Todd says, can't go wrong with a corn cob. Ah, you can. What's up, baby? I'm good. I'm not gonna... I'm just gonna make a snack. Um, crap, what was I saying? What was I saying now? Oh yeah, you can go wrong with corn cobs, but... I'm not a huge, huge fan of cobs in general. I just use them for... for, uh, aromatics. I'll need to look up when I sell her this as well. Yeah, Ehrlich um, pipes were made in um, in Boston. There, there was a pipe shop that was there forever. Um, eventually, uh, the I believe it was. The guy, eventually his son came in, started making some pipes as well, and then uh, unfortunately they went out of business sometime, I want to say in the 90s? So this this one is probably somewhere either early 80s, late 70s, I think. Um, they didn't really date their pipes at all. They didn't really change their logo, so dating this is a bit difficult. Not really sure. Hmm. 
as far as like pipes go, I haven't been like super. I really don't have uh, many from like the same brand, so I don't really have like more than one pipe from the same brand. I think the only reason I have two pipes, unlimited pipes, is because they came in the same lot together, and that was it. Um, I don't think I if I have any. Nope. I don't have any pipes that are... I don't have it more than one pipe from from a single maker. Not for, I don't think my local area has any current pipe makers that I'm aware of. Though we had at least a few in the Chicago... I bet there's, I bet there's guys in the Chicago area. I mean, why do they do the pipe show in Chicago? Uh. Garrett misses home. Where's home? Or where was home? Briar Club. Well, I'm sure I've been out of the loop for a while. I did several shows a year from around 94 until 2016. Did most of the Chicago shows at that time. Uh, but before the smoking ban in 2008, I'd smoke everywhere in that resort in the early days. Scarborough is a bit of a, it's definitely like a, it was definitely pressed at one point, so it's a, I wouldn't call it a broken flake, it's more of a undone flake that was cut, because uh, the strands are actually really, really long. <clears throat> but I'm not surprised that I've gotten two, two false lights out of this one. Guilty Briar Club, sounds like you have a great uh, eclectic collection there, by the way. Yeah, uh, I do have a video on my entire collection, but or my main collection.
But yeah, like I said, I don't really have any. I got 18 in my normal rotation, nine for Latakia base blends, and then nine for Virginia base blends. And I, like I said, I only have two pipes unlimited pipes because they came in the same lot. But other than that, I don't have any duplicate of makers. Um, my favorites are the Winslow Crown Viking, this one here, uh, the Stanwell Bishop that I already showed that I put back on the shelf. Not only are like they my favorite pipes just because of the pipes, but uh, actually both of them were purchased by my wife, so that makes them, I guess, a little, uh, a little more sentimental, but um, just the pipes themselves, they would be my favorite pipes either way. Uh, I would actually like to get some more uh, Winslows because I'm a big fan of the shape that they do for the Bent Brandy, but they're about 150 bucks for kind of the lower end ones of theirs. So someday maybe on that front. Um, but like I have a Tim West, that's a maker that I really wanted for quite some time. What's up dude reviews and slightly burnt toast. How's it going, man? Um, so I got Tim West. That's one that I really wanted for a long time. I lived in Columbus. He was based out of Columbus, but he, you know, he's like classic freehand guy that he made tons and tons of really cool freehands. So I, I'm a big fan of that pipe that I have from him. I picked it up one year around Christmas time. Somebody on one of the forums was selling it and um, the price was right and it looked really cool. So I picked it up. Uh, really happy with the Tim West. So I definitely like to get more Winslows, more Tim Wests. I'd like to get a Boswell at some point, uh, just because they make ridiculously huge pipes and I kind of want one. Because <laughs> I just love gigantic pipes. Like the chamber doesn't have to be massive. So like the, the chamber on this one, even though, you know, it's the size of my palm, uh, the chamber is relatively normal. Um, Briar Club, yeah, Tim has been my go-to guy for stem replacements. He did both my cook pipes when stems went kaput. Um, how's Tim doing anyways? I know he's kind of old at this point. Isn't he, like, really old now? I haven't really heard much from him. So I don't even know, like, if he's alive still. So, like that, I like these Ehrlichs. These are pretty cool. I have a old Talamona. They stopped making pipes in like the late 80s, I think. Um, it was a father-son operation going in the end there. And I have some just from small makers. Um, one I commissioned directly from C Pipes. Letter C. Uh, he's out of... I want to say Portugal. He's definitely in Europe. I'm not. It could be Czech Republic. Uh, also, I got one from BR Pipes, but his Facebook has been not updated in quite a few years now. His website is down, so I don't know what he's doing. He was over in Europe. I bought one directly off of him. So I think now I'd just like to buy directly from, you know, the artist, um, especially if it's, uh, you know, good, something cool. I'd love to get a Sabrina pipe, but her pipes are so expensive. They're awesome, but they're really expensive. She does such good work. Or captured honeycomb pipes. 
are insane. Sorry to hear about the layoff. I had to walk from my job in healthcare. How long have I had that hat? Uh, this hat I've probably had, I don't know, three years, probably. This is a fan set, and I don't think this particular hat is sold on Amazon anymore. Uh, I searched for it, but I don't think I have found it. Thanks, Simon. Hopefully I'll find work soon. Luckily, I have a decent amount of time that I can take off, so I'm fine on money for quite a while. I'm set until, like, I don't even have to worry about finding a job until next year anyways. Um, just just how everything worked out, so I'm, I'm good. But um, that's why I'm going to kind of focus on tea and tobacco and my other projects here on YouTube. Hopefully I can build those up enough to start bringing in at least a little bit of money. Um, Briar Club, that's excellent. Uh, artisans pre absolutely appreciate when you do. Yeah, I, uh, I definitely purchased directly. I'll definitely get some more pipes from C Pipes at some point. I think I need to let this dry just a little bit. Just having a little trouble keeping it lit here. Uh, if you could go back in time, would you be your own bot? Well, yeah, but if I went back in time, I'd have uh, quite a lot of insight onto what happened. <laughs> So, anyways, slightly burnt toast. This hat is a fan set. Um, but like I said, I don't know where you can get it now. I wish I could find where to get this hat. Because um, I really like this hat. I've been wearing it a lot the past couple weeks. Um, usually I wear my Dockers for the most part, but uh, I pulled this one out and I've been wearing this one. And uh, I went to go see if I could get it in a different color and I cannot find it on Amazon. So that has been a little bit of a bummer because I really like this hat. So it would be nice if I could get another one, just in a different color. This is why I usually don't sm smoke a pipe on the stream, <laughs> and I tend to go for cigars, because it always goes out, because I'm always setting it down, talking to you guys. Setting it down, talking to you guys, searching for something on the, on the net somewhere. <laughs> But substitute wise, I definitely go for the Dockers. The Dockers flat cap is definitely the one that I wear the most, but this one's actually just super comfy too. This one's actually kind of cool too. I've never seen it before. It actually has a drawstring in it, so you can tighten it if you need to, but I have a fat head, so. so I'll take a look a little bit more, but yeah, I don't think I'll be able to find this one. Oh, 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 maybe. Nope. So I found the listing, but this particular cap is not there anymore. And now they have, um, yeah, 
they don't have this hat there anymore. Which is a bit of a bummer, because I really like this hat. Nope, that's not the one. So this one that I've just dropped in the chat tends to be the one that I wear the most and is the closest one to what I am currently wearing. Some Semo Gaoth Hemson Flake. I have. I don't even. I don't even think I've even heard of that one. Which one is that? Is that a European only? There's a few blends that don't make it out of the out of Europe to the U.S. Like I don't remember hearing that one. Yeah, so I just went to the listing and it is no longer available. And I am kind of mad about that. So I guess I'll have to remove that listing from my uh, from my videos. It's a Pipes and Cigars exclusive? From Samuel Gallup? I don't know why they'd have an exclusive with pipes and cigars. It's also not listed on the website right now. But my well, um, so this one actually has ear flaps, and so does that Docker's one. But the ear flaps can just stay up. I, for the Dockers one, I didn't even realize it had ear flaps until I had it for like three years. <laughs> That's how like not noticeable they are that they're stuffed up, that they're tucked in. Uh, I didn't even realize it had ear flaps. So yeah, don't worry about the ear flaps. Like this one has ear flaps. You can you can just fold them back up. Um, and that Dockers one, same way. So the ear flaps are just uh, are optional. You don't have to use them. They're they're optional use. <laughs> Got it there four months ago. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Not not sure why they would have a uh, why they would have a exclusive on a Samuel Gaweth. It could have just been that they got it in, just like a uh, brown sugar flake. Might be a new hat in your future. Yeah, use the link. It's an affiliate link. I get like 2%. Don't worry, you pay exactly the same. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes things will come into the US, so it might not be specifically an exclusive. They just might happen to have gotten whatever. Because, uh, you know, uh, brown sugar flake used to come into the U.S. Uh, I don't know if Pipes and Cigars is the only one who happened to be able to get some. Uh, I can't remember. Now it's called. Now it's actually just called BS Flake, but I haven't seen it in the U.S. since it was since the name was changed. Um, what else? There's been a lot of S and, uh, Samuel Gowith that has not been coming into the U.S. lately. Um... Uh, I want to say this was a it was a customs thing.
used to call them English caps or golfing hats. Yeah, um, flat caps. Some people call them newsboys, even though this style is not a newsboy. They call them herring bones as well. The official tea and tobacco hat. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll get like, maybe I'll find a, a like an embroiderer to get like a patch so I can just like sew the patch on like right here. Really, right now, the Scarborough, a little different than I remember it, but it's been about four years since I've had it. Um, has a touch of a lemony flavor in there. Has some stewed fruit in there as well. Slight mothballiness on the um, retro hail. Super smooth on the retro hail, though. Like, this is one of the smoothest non Englishes. This is probably the smoothest non English I've had as far as the retro hail goes. There's no burn, it's just nice and creamy. So, it's very well pH balanced. Yeah, it would be cool if uh, I, I'll i see what I can do, if I can find a patch maker. First, I'm going to get these t-shirts out, and then we'll uh, go from there. But I'm hoping the t-shirts come out good. But yeah, since, uh, since I have... Well, I'm sending off to the printers. They're going to give me prices. Um, I sent them off to the printer... Uh, a couple hours ago. So hopefully those um, will be good. Yeah, there's just a weird touch of lemon in there. And that kind of stewed fruit. A little bit of mothball-y on the uh, retro hail. I mean, it's not bad. Um, There's just nothing really I can pick out at the moment. I remember it being a lot sweeter. Could just be my palate tonight. I did have Mexican food earlier before I got on here, so. Thanks, Briar Club, on the designs. Yeah, um... I can't say enough good things about uh, my graphics guy. Uh, he's just... He wants to uh, kind of change, change professions at some point, and this is kind of like a side gig for him, so he's been doing all types of stuff um, for me, which I have been extremely grateful for, for how much he's been able to contribute to my projects. He does... Um, he does graphics for my wrestling channel, and I ping him multiple times a week for a new thumbnail because I do uh, news segments, news segment videos, you know, five, five or six times a week, plus the podcast thumbnails that have at least, I do at least one episode, sometimes two to three episodes a week. Any new Tobacco reviews coming soon. Yes, uh, I'm going to film a tobacco review tomorrow for uh, Kamoy's cask number four. You can get this in bulk. I'm not sure if you can get it as a tin, but I bought this one as bulk. It's a it's a Virginia Flake. Um, Garrett, who has um, been in my Discord for a very long time now, he requested it, so he gets first dibs on that. Uh, so yeah, I have that. I have about six, eight, 16, 17 other tobacco blends that I have 
in jars so they've been opened so those are gonna be the first ones so i'm gonna bang those out since i've been laid off i don't have a <laughs> i don't have anything else to do so i'm gonna be working on this channel i'm gonna be working on my that's wrestling channel which is a wrestling channel obviously it's uh i cover mostly aew and new japan pro wrestling so that is what's happening over there i also have some gaming stuff which is in a different channel, but I'll be working a lot on this channel, on the Tea and Tobacco channel. So, yes, I have a lot of reviews coming. I have a lot of other... <laughs> all that work, smoking, and reviewing. Well, you know, video production is a giant pain in the ass. Uh, so it is, it is work. It's not like doing nothing. Um... So I'll be doing that. I'm going to film a whole bunch of other stuff. How do I pro pro pronounce my gaming channel? Zoix Dark. We don't have a kappa like we do on Twitch. <laughs> As you can see, uh, this channel ha over here on YouTube has a ton more subscribers than my Twitch channel. I think you should do bacon old fashioned after that. I will do. What is my favorite tea? Um, da Hong Pao is probably the tea I hit up the most. Uh, it goes with everything. It's good in the morning. It's good in the evening. It's good as iced. It's good just iced. So Da Hong Pao is probably the tea I drink the most of. Um, yeah. A duck. Duck is back. Just after nine o'clock. <laughs> uh, what's my preferred pipe tobaccos and cigars? Um, cigars I'm mostly all over the place with, but my favorite cigars are the Rocky Patels 1990-1992. Um, Gurkha has discontinued at this point, although I think they just call it the Shaggy now. Uh, they had a vintage shaggy foot, which is like 10 year aged uh, stuff. I really like the Cohiba Nicaragua. Those are good. Uh, they're super strong though, so I don't really smoke them often. The La Perla Habana White. Uh, the White Pearl. Excellent, excellent smoke. Um, as far as pipe tobaccos go, um, English heavy Latakia blends are definitely like my wheelhouse. So, um, my favorites are Pirate Cake, Ten Russians, Penzance, um, Lancer Slices. Those are my heavy go-tos. But again, I just like variety. I, I, I'm definitely like a variety guy. Like I almost never buy, I don't buy boxes of cigars. Um, I love sampling everything. So I don't, I don't tend to rebuy a lot of tobaccos unless they're really, really good. So um, I'll buy, you know, a tin or a couple ounces of bulk stuff to try it. And then if I really like it, then I'll buy a few tins once in a while. But I always buy Penzance if I have it, if I have access to it.
Yeah, I'm up to uh, 13 people watching. I was up to 17 earlier. You get custom six packs. Yeah, I do that at like the uh, if I'm gonna go get like a, a site that we have a we have a really cool um, beverage place that you can make your own custom six packs however you want. So I I'll buy you know. Uh, six different ciders to try. But yeah, I'm super sampler. I just, I rarely buy the same tea more than once unless it's something really good. So Da Hong Pao is one of the ones that I buy regularly year after year. Um, there are a few things I'll pick up once in a while if I see them, but yeah, like I said, the Esoterica stuff, I'll buy Penzance, I'll buy Stonehaven, I'll buy Margate and Soda Bed. Um, what's it? Dunbar? Durbar? I don't remember. And um, what's the other one? Dorchester? I'll buy those if I find them. Um, just because they're a pain to find. And when. Um, when Suge was being discontinued, I bought like 15 tins of Raijin. I am back. Just fix your slide. Oh, the slide to your pool. How's the new house doing? Everything good? Everything good in the uh, new, new neighborhood? You're moved in, right? Pretty sure you moved into your new house already. Just named like your top six tobaccos. Yeah, uh, Latakia base blends are definitely my favorite. Uh, yeah, so th those are definitely at the top of my list. Um, somebody asked for a humidor tour on the YouTube channel, so I will shoot that and you can see all my humidors. What is Lancer Slices? Never heard of it. It's awesome. It's a heavy Latakia uh, flake. The only comes in bulk. I believe Smoking Pipes has it right now. Uh, it's really, really good, and even if you age the crap out of it, the base tobaccos are so good that you don't even care if the, the Latakia has kind of tapered off a bit. Thanks, Duck. Glad you appreciate it. Me calling down to dinner. Glad to catch your live stream. Looking forward to seeing the upcoming ruse. Thanks, man. Thanks for joining us this evening. Been so hot. I have not been drinking tea. Uh, I guess I could probably ice some DHP, but you know. <laughs> I never think ahead of time. So. It's like, oh, I don't want to have to wait like 15 minutes to ice tea. <laughs> I have a moth running around in here. I always forget icing tea is an option. My wife steal my dog. I think she did. Yeah, how is everyone doing so far? It's been so hot outside. <laughs> I like went outside just to walk to the car and it's like, oh my god. It's like walking into a sauna and it's like 
super high percent humidity. Not fun at all. James, if you're uh, still on, we totally need to do a live stream together again sometime. Uh, supposed to be cold front of 85 tomorrow in Michigan. Yeah, it's supposed to be like 91 here tomorrow. Heat has been rough. Is, uh, is it someone there to... I am not sure what Todd is trying to say. Is it someone there to Latakia Flake by H.H. McBurns? I'm guessing you're trying to do speech to text. I'm guessing is it something like Latakia Flake by H.H. &H McBurn? Uh, something along those lines. That's a really bad uh, uh, speech to text if that's what he's trying to do. <laughs> Uh, it is kind of like it, but uh, I think Lancer Slices is better than Latakia Flake by H&H. Uh, H&H H -H McBaron. I'm assuming that's what you're trying to say. <laughs> or you might want to check the type of herb that you have put into your pipe. But yeah, I think uh, Lancer Slices is, is better than Latakia Flake. A little moisture build up here. <laughs> James is come it's coming in and out. This is a chill stream. Yeah, it tends to be chill. Like we don't go any we don't go super crazy here. Mike got my first Savinelli for my anniversary. Can't wait to try it out. Nice. Yeah, I tend to, uh, that tends to be the go-to gift from my wife is a, a pipe for random stuff. Though, as far as anniversaries go, we're really bad when it comes to anniversaries. Uh, last year, we both forgot our anniversary. Uh, this year, we both forgot our wedding anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> We almost always forget our wedding anniversary. Pretty much every year. <laughs> so usually it's a birthday, a birthday gift. <laughs> I mean, obviously it sucks when you forget your anniversary, but as long as your wife forgets it too, then you're in the clear. What shape Savinelli did you get? Uh, 
I also went on Amazon recently and bought a 12 pack of check pipe tools. So now I'll never be able to not find one. <laughs> Just got here is the title accurate that we are chilling out or that I've been laid off. Yes, I have been laid off. Is it similar to La Tequila Flake by H and H? It's actually H H. Um, it's a person's name. H H McBaron. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, Lancer Slices I think is better. It's uh, I like the Virginia that they put in Lancer Slices. It's extremely good and nice and sweet underneath the uh, the Latakia. And like I said, the components, the base components of the, the Lancer Slices, even if you age them a long time, it just gets better. Even if the Latakia starts dropping off, uh, the base components of it is just excellent. I'm a huge fan of it. But if you like, if you like the HH Latakia Flake, definitely try the the Lancer slices. I think you I think you'll really like the Lancer slices. Thanks Noah, just vibe into the stream. It, it, the the background music is the background music at a good level. That is what I since I can't hear it back. I'm just going by the meter. The meter looks like it's sitting at a good level that I am significantly, well, at least the voice is significantly higher. It's a uh, 614, nice. How do you avoid tongue bite and losing your sense of taste? Um, so a lot of it can be the tobacco itself if it is not, um, if it is not balanced well, it's usually a pH issue. Um, but another thing is, uh, I believe I said it in my how to smoke a pipe video, but um, when you're drawing it, uh, have the smoke, have the uh, your bit pointed more towards the roof of your mouth. So it hits there first instead of your tongue. Um, really, you want to draw it into the, the, the open, the, you know, the space in your mouth and not so don't have it hit your tongue directly have it go into that space and mix also another thing you can do is loosen your lips and draw in fresh air while you're drawing on the pipe as well so it'll mix um with the cool air first and that actually can sweeten up smokes as well Um, so yeah, so, so don't have it hit your tongue directly and also just loosen your lips a bit and bring in some fresh air as well. And it'll mix, uh, it works with cigars too. If you just bring in some fresh air beside the cigar and it like mixes with the fresh air real quick, cools it down and that definitely helps. But a lot of, um, it, and like I said, it can depend just on the chemistry, you know, your body chemistry and the chemistry of the tobacco. So if you'll find it a lot with aromatics um, that you'll get tongue bite because you're dealing with all these other chemicals and whatnot. So it can really throw off the, the pH. I find uh, Latakia based blends don't tend to bite because the the Latakia is a much higher pH than most and your body's usually running around, you know, the, the inside of your mouth is running around eight to nine on the pH scale, whereas other stuff can be much lower. So if it's if it's not a well balanced as far as pH goes for the tobacco, that can be really tongue bitey as well. So it could just be the blend. It could be your just your body chemistry. Um, but yeah, those other tips uh, can help. Uh, but if you lose your sense of taste, then uh, I'd say lay off for a little while. Um, uh, use a good, you know, good oral care is obviously good, uh, you know, important. So, you know, brush your teeth. Uh, I like to use a one to one ratio of baking soda and activated carbon powder. I use coconut shell carbon powder. 
Uh, so I'll brush with that. That kind of like neutralizes everything. And then I'll brush it with regular toothpaste after that. So it really like kind of helps uh, refresh everything. Um, also, if you uh, use, instead of like using a really like super, you know, Colgate or something uh, in the morning, use a something like a Tom's of Maine, something that doesn't have any flavor in it. That's going to overwhelm your taste buds in the morning. Uh, also, one thing that I found that really screws your taste bud is artificial sweeteners. So if you drink diet soda and whatnot, that really will throw off your taste buds a lot. So artificial sweeteners, hot sauce, anything spicy, cap so anything with capsaicin, so any hot peppers and whatnot, that'll also throw your taste buds off as well. So that's why my taste buds are off tonight, because I actually had Mexican food earlier. <laughs> and uh Hot sauce, so. So my taste buds are a little off right now. But yeah, artificial sweeteners are by far the worst as far as just binding to your taste buds and not letting go for a very, very long time. Bought a Savinelli 115 coming from Smoking Pipes. Discounted half off. Nice. <clears throat> keep setting this down, so I just have to keep relighting it. Not a big deal. Relighting is not a big deal. I think that's the thing that frustrates a lot of new pipe smokers. Relighting, not a big deal at all. Um, obviously, it can be a bit more of a pain in the ass if you're trying to smoke a pipe while driving. So be careful if you have to relight while you're driving. Really, just don't relight while you're driving. <laughs> Wait for a stoplight. <laughs> um, Relights are perfectly fine, no big deal. Um, so I know some pipe smokers, some new pipe smokers think if they have to relight multiple times, they've really screwed up and can get frustrated. Don't get frustrated, it's not a big deal at all. <clears throat> it's all part of the hobby. Yeah, it's, it's um, make it part, just uh, chalk it up to being part of the ritual. Um, you know, pipe smoking is supposed to be relaxing. So if you if you view the relight as a relaxing part, make it part of the relaxing part. Um, view it as part of the relaxing, you know, uh, um, ritual. Then that's not going to be a big deal. When you relight, should you wait a bit for the pipe to cool down? O only if your pipe is too hot. Um, you don't have to wait. Um, easy way to figure out if your pipe is too hot. Hold it against your cheek. Your cheek, well, most people's cheeks are very sensitive to heat. If you can hold it against your cheek without an issue, your pipe is probably not too hot. Uh, that is why I like big honking pieces of wood like this, because it really pulls it has so much more mass to distribute the heat um it works great like a thinner wall you know something like this um can get really hot um that's one of the reasons why i like you know the big beefy pipes uh these i mean these are fine too you just have to be a little carefuler if you can't if it's too hot if it's uncomfortable holding against your cheek it is too hot let it cool down for a bit but if it is not too hot, you can just go straight to, to relighting. Not a big deal. I love the light and the relight and all the lights after that. Yeah, exactly. If you if you view it as part of the it's part of the, the like I said, it's part of the ritual, it's part of the, the whole thing. So if you view the relight as an enjoyable part, then 
it's not a big deal. You always get my bowl where it's kind of hot in the hand and set it down. Yeah, um, if it's getting too hot, you know, the, the, there's multiple reasons for it to be too hot as well. Yeah, this just does not want to stay lit, but I don't care. That's fine. I'll, I'll just keep relighting. Um, obviously, smoking too fast. Um, if you... If... Another thing is if it's starting to go out, a lot of people will, you know, try to draw on it to stoke the ember that is probably the worst thing you can do just let it go out and relight it it's so much better just to do that um it can also get hot if uh the moisture content is too high because you have to burn it hotter to keep it lit so then you can accidentally be be too hot right there uh too dry everything just burns quickly um, so, you know, there's, there's different things and just, uh, mitigate what you can. If, uh, it is too wet or too dry going in, then just go accordingly while you're smoking it. Set it down if you have to. Uh, use matches instead of a lighter. That also helps. Because matches burn at about six to 700 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas your butane soft flame is well over 1,000. Um, I believe. I'm pretty sure the soft flame is over 1,000. I'll have to check. Butane soft flame temp. Let's see. The torch can hit 1100 Celsius. Don't know the. Um... Around six to 800 Celsius. So yeah, that's over a thousand. Have I had the punch blend? I have not. I have not had the special blend Mississippi River. I don't think I have it either. I have a tin of the regular Mississippi River. But I do not have the special. I have not opened it yet, though. And according to my giant spreadsheet, it's been in my possession for just over three years now. So probably due to get open soon.
And I do not have the punch on hand. I wasn't sure if I did or not. There's a few... All They all came out at the same time. There was the... the the punch, the Gurkha brands, the was there a Macanudo one that came out as well? Like these cigar brand names on uh, a Sutliff brand blend, basically. Sutliff made them all, but they're all. Um, I'm assuming whoever owns Sutliff owns those brands too. It's more barbecue. I'm a big fan of the uh, barbecue flavor. I have a spreadsheet of all my tobacco inventory. Yes, I have, a t I have a spreadsheet that contains my cigar inventory and my pipe tobacco inventory. And my tea inventory. Good to know what you have. So like I can tell you, I have on hand 524 ounces of pipe tobacco. And I have 500 and, oh, wow, well, that's funny. <laughs> so I have 524 ounces of pipe tobacco. I also have 524 cigars on hand as well. So that's funny, I have 524 ounces and 524 cigars. Can you ever have too much though? That's can you have can you have too much? I should be getting a new um, temperature controlled humidor soon. Looking forward to that. You guys will get a nice review of that when I get it. Brands make a new, uh, new air humidor. Should be here in the next couple weeks. Don't know exactly when just yet, but should be soon. Don't know where I'll put it. I'll probably just put it right on top of this one that's already on the floor. Behind the logo. Uh, where are we? This one. <laughs> Yeah, you got to buy all the stuff now because it's only going to go up in price because the taxes just keep going up. Like when I first started buying cigars, you know, they were significantly cheaper than they are now. Um, pipe tobacco was significantly cheaper than it is now. Um, I mean, it's probably up about 50% since I started buying pipe tobacco and that's only been 10 years. I mean, a lot have gone up a lot in price, so get it now. And if it's something, especially if it's something that you can sell her. So if it's a if it's a Virginia based blend, those you could basically store indefinitely. As long as you store them correctly, they will be good in 50 years. Um, so Virginia based blends, vapors, uh, anything with Latakia is going to fade over time. But if you vacuum seal it, uh, it will kind of halt the uh, aging process a bit, so vacuum sealing is not a bad thing if you're trying to preserve the state it's currently in. 
or really, really slow it down. Uh, what's up, Sulphur? How's it going? Not too bad. I'm doing good. Over there on the uh, Twitch stream. Most people are over here on the YouTube stream, so if you wonder who I'm talking to, talking on a uh, different platform. <laughs> So yeah, so there's plenty of stuff. I've been laid off. Yes, I have. I have been laid off. Friday was my last day. I sent my my laptop back to the company on Saturday. So if they have any questions, they are SOL because I can't tell them anything at this point. What was my job? Uh, I worked within uh, mostly customer contracts. Um, but specifically within chargebacks, which is a very st strange thing that not many people know about. It's basically a way for the manufacturer to control pricing through the distributor. Um, so I'll give you a, an example. Say, try to make up a company here. Say the Acme Coffee Company. So I worked for the distributor. Say the Acme Coffee Company sells a box of coffee to you and the wholesale price is $100. But they have a contract to, I guess we'll go with somebody real, 7-Eleven. Say they have a contract with 7-Eleven saying that they can buy their coffee at $80 a box. So if the distributor buys it for 100, but they're going to sell it to 7-Eleven for 80. You are now, now the distributor is short $20. And basically what my team does is go back to the Acme coffee company and say, Hey, we sold a box of your coffee to 7-Eleven for $80. Uh, we bought it from you for a hundred. Since you have this agreement between you and 7-Eleven, please pay us back the $20. So they send us the $20 and we're good. Um, sometimes you'll be like, hey, Acme Coffee Company, we sold this box of coffee to 7-Eleven for $80. And the coffee company will come back and say, well, we sent you a price update a week ago that you should be selling it for $90, so we're only gonna give you 10. So now we have to figure out, okay, did we really screw up? And we should have given, we should have sold it for 90, or did, or do we go back and say, hey, Mr. Coffee Company, you didn't send us that price update. Here's the proof that we got it after we sold this product, so please pay us the other $10 you owe us. That's basically what my team does. We go back and forth with the, with the company to be like, hey, um, you actually owe us the $20 because um, you know here's the documentation, you owe us the $20. Obviously we're talking way more money than this, but yes, sounds like to me that they got the short end of the stick. Who got the short end of the stick? So basically this is a way to control, so basically the, the company sets the wholesale price above what they actually want to sell it for. So basically, um, they can control the pricing through the distributor. So basically, the coffee company pays the distributor a fee to facilitate their contracts. So that's what happens. Obviously, this is on a massive scale, though. The Acme co Coffee Company is fine because they really only wanted to sell it for 80. So. They sold it for 80, so they just give us the other 20 bucks back. So the co the coffee company is fine. It's basically how they can, since they're selling to a distributor, they're not doing their own distribution. If they charge the distributor more money than they actually want to sell it for, then they can control the pricing out to the customers. Uh, or obviously, if anybody does buy it from the distributor, it's at a higher cost and they can't undercut the people that they have contracts with. So if um, uh, I don't even know what another chain of convenience stores is, Mr. Mike's, um, if Mr. Mike's doesn't have a contract with Acme, Co Acme Coffee Company 
and they come to me to buy the coffee, they're going to pay a hundred bucks, probably plus a couple percent markup. They'll buy it for a hundred and three dollars or whatever. So th that's fine too. But the thing is now, Mr. Mike's, they just paid twenty three dollars more for the coffee than Seven Eleven did. So Seven Eleven can undercut the price because they have a contract with the Acme Coffee Company. How long did I do the job? Uh, Thirteen years. Uh, various levels within the. I eventually was like the highest level analyst um, on the team. So basically, if some really weird things happen and like the other analysts couldn't figure out why a certain price got done because there's a lot of other logic within this um, that can dictate a price. So basically, if if somebody couldn't figure something out or they needed some data mining done, then it got sent up to me. So I got all the really weird puzzles. So I would I would do that. Did I ever have a bad day at work? Not really, no. Um, I thought the job was fun because it's basically puzzle solving. So I'd you know, go through the systems, I'd pull massive amounts of data, I'd find where the discrepancy happened. So it could have been a system glitch. Uh, it could have been a timing issue. So we put in the price change, but it didn't cascade from the price change system into the actual pricing system because say they took the pricing system offline for an hour because they had to do updates. Uh, usually this will happen overnight, but sometimes it'll happen um early maybe it, it might happen at uh say they took it offline at 11 hoping it would get hoping it would be done by midnight but it crossed midnight and it only came back up at say at you know 12 20 in the morning so now the price chain gets put in but now it's late unlucky 13 yeah it was almost for it would be 14 if i made it three more weeks it would have been 14 years But yeah, so I made it. I was up to the like the highest level analysts um, in the department. Yeah, but I've been working from home for the past seven years, so that was fun. Have I ever worked anywhere else? Nope. That, I've been working there since I was like twenty-two years old. Twenty-three. So yes, that is pretty much it. I've been working there since I was twenty-three years old. So a little bummed. Um, so, I mean, I'd love to go back into chargebacks for a different company. There's a bunch of different industries that do it. Um, I was in uh, drug distribution, but you know, the food distribution does it too. A um, lot of, lot of, basically anything, anything that gets sent through a distributor, they're gonna have some sort of things. Legal, legal drug distribution, so pharmaceutical distribution. <laughs> yes, le legal, legal, legal drug distribution, not, not a, not illicit drug distribution, pharmaceutical distribution. But the food industry does it too. Eric, that kingpin, yeah. Uh, all the tins behind me, um, yeah, it's a lot of different pipe tobaccos. You're over on Twitch, which is mostly gaming. So if you didn't know, yeah, it's all it's all pipe tobacco. Um, so since you're over on Twitch, uh, I am streaming over on YouTube as well. But my biggest channel by far is called Tea and Tobacco. I uh, review cigars, pipe tobacco, and uh, tea. Um, so that is yeah, that's all. You know, I got all my pipe tobaccos here. I have tons more in storage. Um, I have my cigar. I have one cigar humidor. Jesus, I can't get it here. This is a, this is a cigar humidor. I also have another temperature controlled one right here, uh, and then I have uh, just kind of tea things. I got a little teapot right there that was made by one of my wife's students. 
Uh, I have a few random tea stuff, but most of my tea stuff is elsewhere. How long have I smoked a pipe? Um, 10 years at this point. I think it was, two, yeah, it's 2010. The end of two, December of 2010 is when I started pipe. Uh, no, I don't have any Cuban cigars because I'm in the U.S. And Cuban cigars are not legal and they're a pain in the ass to get. And they're ridiculously overpriced. So I don't bother. Um, if you're in different countries, though, uh, if you're outside the U.S., if you're in Canada, everything's super overpriced because the... Oh, you're in the U.K. Yeah, so in the U.K., um, yeah, cigars are just overpriced no matter where they come from. Uh, but since I'm in the U.S., it's it's all going to be from Central America other than, uh, other than Cuba. And even if Cubans were legal in the U.S., I think they'd be way overpriced anyways for the quality that you get. I mean, they're not like any better per se than stuff you get from Dominican Republic or Nicaragua. I think it's more the allure and the history that people are buying um, and not really the quality per se. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, a lot of the pipe tobacco I buy, actually what I'm smoking right now is Esoterica Scarborough and that actually is produced in the UK. Produced in the Jersey Isles. So that's what I'm smoking right now. It's actually made in uh, in the UK. How many cigars do I smoke a day? Um, on average, it would be less than one. <laughs> I might maybe three to four a week. It would be kind of typical. I mean, it really changes, especially with the season. Uh, I find winter, I might smoke a little bit more than in the summer. Uh, I find that tends to be my, my rotation, but I'll go like, I'll go months without smoking. Not so much these days. Uh, do I smoke cigarettes as well? No. So I'll go, you know, I'll go weeks or months without smoking a pipe or a cigarette. I mean, a cigar. Never smoke cigarettes. So, like, um, this is my first pipe or cigar since, I don't know, Thursday, Friday? No, um, I don't know what day. I don't remember the last one I had. Uh, it might've been Friday, so I didn't have one yesterday. What made you start smoking a pipe? Uh, cigars were getting really, really expensive. <laughs> um, I did not make as much money back then, uh, and per smoke, Pipes are significantly cheaper. So one really nice cigar is going to cost... Well, this is this is US prices. UK is going to be ridiculously more expensive. But uh, here, a uh, good cigar is going to run you maybe 6 to $10, usually. Um, and two... We'll make this UK. 50 grams of pipe tobacco, which is going to probably get you... 10, 10 to 15 pipes full will cost you like $10. So you can get, for $10, you can get 15 pipe smoking sessions, or you can get one, maybe two really nice cigars. <laughs> um, so it's significantly cheaper, and that's why, I, but now I, I, I go back and forth. I don't really have a preference. Um, it's just cigar smoking got really expensive at the time, and I was not making a ton of money. Um, but I still wanted, you know, to be able to smoke, you know, once in a while without dropping a ton of money. So, uh, that is what originally got me to pipes. Um, so is pipe smoking bad for your lungs? Uh, for the vast majority of people, for pipes and cigars, you don't inhale. It's more of a, it's a flavor thing. Um, so you just draw it into your mouth and then 
blow it out. Um, so pipe smoking, cigar smoking is significantly lower risk to for like lung cancer and whatnot. It like raises the possibility from like, so if one is baseline control group, it raises to like 1.02 or three. Um, so it's basically a like, you know, maybe a 3% increase in risk from not smoking at all. Uh, and that and that study was done with people who smoked five cigars a day. So so like one or two or three a week uh, is going to be very negligible. Um, this is all from the FDA or the CDC. One of I think it was CDC. The CDC did that study. Um, but you'll have to look that up. I'm not a doctor and. I'm, not giving any medical advice here um, so you can look up those studies as if you if you'd like but um it's negligible the marlboro man died at 40 george burns died when he was 100 <laughs> let's go with that george burns smoked like a chimney with cigars but he lived till he was 100 so But yes, it's a it's a flavor thing. It's not a, like a nicotine delivery thing. That's what that's what cigarettes are for. Um, but yeah, the vast majority of pipe and cigar smokers do not inhale. Uh, it's just a flavor thing. It's a relaxing thing. And it's not like a do it all day every day type of thing. And just make sure you brush your teeth really well. Do I smoke cannabis as well? Um, considering that's illegal in this country, I'm going to say no. I'm in the US. The part where it's not the, the United States. <laughs> it's technically not legal in any state, technically. I'm in New Hampshire, which is not legal. In, not legal at the state level. It's not legal at the federal level. It's not legal at the federal level anywhere. Noah's going to head out. Cool. Thanks for hanging out. Is it nice living in New Hampshire? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, the summers can suck though. It can get a little too hot for me. I like the cold a lot more. So the winters are nice. You get a ton of snow and it's freezing cold out, which I like. Summers can get a little hot. Like I said, it's really hot today. It was like 96 today. I don't know what that is in non-freedom units. That is 35.5 Celsius for those keeping store. Sport. So it's a bit hot here today. I like it a lot colder. That's why I got the AC going. 
Luckily, it's actually not that loud. So. Yes, I drink a lot of tea. Not so much when it's this hot out, though. <laughs> yeah, all ice, uh, all ice some stuff. Um, I always forget about it, though, and then it's like by the time I actually want to drink something, and it's like, oh, I don't want to wait 15 minutes to make my iced tea, so... <laughs> A lot of times it's just ice water, um, but yes, I will make I will make DHP into iced tea. That's Da Hong Pao. It's a type of oolong. Tea in England is usually black tea with milk. Yep, uh, I do not drink any tea with milk. Uh, if I have to put milk or sugar in the tea, I don't bother drinking it. It doesn't taste good on its own, not good tea. <laughs> Just trying to mask the flavors. If you have to mask the flavors or enhance them, then get better tea. <laughs> Americans are not big tea drinkers, no. Mostly coffee. Coffee is the... Coffee tends to be the beverage of choice here, as far as that realm of beverage. Hack me coffee. Yeah. My wife's a huge coffee drinker, but I am not. She is doing homework. My wife is doing homework right now. At least I think she's doing homework. She should be doing homework. Because it's due today. What'd she say about the job situation? Not much. Not a huge deal at the moment. I have plenty of... We're fine for now. Uh, really, I don't have to find a job till next year. <laughs> well, I didn't do anything to get laid off. <laughs> they were just... They moved my entire department to a different company. So, it's not like I got fired. I didn't get fired. They were just re they were just getting rid of like the entire department and moving it to a different company. They're basically outsourcing the job that I did to a different company. So this is, I, we knew about this since October. Yeah, this is not like it is. I found out about it two days ago. We found out about this happening back in October. So it's been quite a long. They gave us plenty of heads up. It's not like a, it was like out of the blue. And it had nothing to do with COVID. Which sucks that it happened during COVID, though, because now it's like everybody is looking for jobs. So there's like no jobs available. So it's like, oh, great. It was bad enough that we knew we were, I was getting laid off in October, but that's before COVID even started. And then it's like COVID starts. It's like, great, I'm getting laid off in the middle of a pandemic. Awesome. How far is the house from the out from my workplace? 800 miles. <laughs> I work from home. So I would go in a couple times a year. I'd travel once a couple times a year, but uh, technically my workplace was 800 miles away from my house, which is why when they moved it to a different company, I was one on the ax. I worked from home for, th for seven of the 13 years. I used to live there and then we were moving away so they allowed me to work from home, and then that was fine. And then, of course, they outsourced the whole thing.
Mike says, time to get smoking that 524 ounces. <laughs> yeah. I buy it faster than I smoke it, so. I will have plenty stashed for a long time. So yeah, I've been working from home since 2013. Almost to the June of, of 13. Are my glasses reading glasses? No. I can see close up just fine. I cannot see far away. Why would I want to look for a different type of job? I like my job. My job was good. Uh, Mike, what pipe is that? This is my uh, Ehrlich. Um, it was a pipe shop in Boston for a very, very long time. I think they were in Boston for like 50 years before they went out of business somewhere in the mid 90s, I think. I'm not 100% sure when they went out of business, um, but they used to be in Boston. I actually got this as a trade with, I had a Kamoi that I did not like very much. So I had a Kamoi that I did not like that great. Um, and I found a guy who collects Kamois and he had this. So we just made a straight trade. I could always make pipes. I am very bad at making pipes. Um, the stems are really hard to make. That's kind of where my downfall would be. I'd be able to make like the body of the pipe, but stems, I just don't have the spatial, um, vision to be able to shape the stem correctly because you have to do it by hand. Um, it's just something I would not be able to do. I am very, I am very not artistic. So I can't draw, can't paint. Uh, I wouldn't be able to hand carve stuff for the most part. I can make pens because that's on a lathe and I can spin stuff, that's not a big deal. Um, <laughs> I can make ashtrays on a lathe. But uh, as far as anything that takes any more 3D spatial awareness, I am very bad at that. I mean, it'd be great if I was, I'd totally do it if uh, I could. Do I have a site where I can buy ashtrays from you? I am going to be working on that. That's part, of, that's one of my things that I'm going to be working on. Uh, I need to talk to the, the printer who, so I need to figure out who's going to be printing my t-shirts and then I need to figure out if I can integrate a uh, cart into them. So like if somebody orders from my shopping cart is there some way I can get the order over to the printer so they can print it? Uh, so I need to figure out how that's going to work. But if you would like an ashtray from me, um, you can join the Discord and just message me directly. Um, you can send me an email, uh, eric.tntobacco at gmail.com. Um, so you can send me an email or, or just get a hold of me. Uh, I shoot my my wood example ashtray 
is uh, out in the other room, but uh, I can make ashtrays basically out of any wood that you would like. Uh, so price depends on wood. I had somebody, uh, I, didn't, I haven't seen him in here, but he's usually in the, the live streams. I made an ashtray out of black palm. That wood's very, very expensive, but uh, I gave him the price and he said that's cool. I think I, I think I had to charge 120, uh, I think I charged $110 for that uh, ashtray because just the wood alone was something like $70. <laughs> Um, just for a small piece of black palm because it's really expensive. But if you'd like a maple, if you'd like maple or oak, something a little bit easier and domestic, uh, that's probably going to be sitting more like $35 to $40 for, uh, for you know, a kind of a, a, a domestic hardwood. Once you start getting into exotics, it's going to be more expensive. But I can make it out of whatever you, whatever you want long as I can get it and it's legal to get <laughs> I mean there are some woods that you can't legally get in the US but most of them can so I I have my Rocky Patel right here so th th I can make like this shape uh, ashtray um, that is basically what the one if you if you go into the the playlist videos on my website um, y You'll be able to see it uh, Or if you pop into discord, I can send you a picture of it Actually, do I have a picture of it? I don't know if I have a picture of it on my computer at this moment that I can display up But yeah get a hold of me and you can uh we can work something out. Can you make clay pipes? I can't make anything that needs that much 3D spatial awareness and dexterity. <laughs> and nobody pretty much ever... Uh, Pipe smokers rarely ever use clay. Briar, uh, briar and corn cob are by far the vast majority of, of pipes. What is Rocky Patel? Ro Rocky Patel is a is a cigar brand made by a gay, made by a guy named Rocky Patel. <laughs> so Rocky Patel is a person who has a cigar line named after himself. Not a gay guy. <laughs> Just a guy, not a gay guy. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know what if he's gay or not. Rocky Patel is an American, he's an American Indian, I believe. America, he's an American with Indian as in from India heritage. So he was born in America, I believe, but he's of India Indian descent of India. Can I get some cigars out of the humidor? Do you want to see something specific? What's up, Solomon? Or I guess... Oh, that's Solo Lone Wolf. How's it going? Just some good ones I have. Uh, yeah, let me see what I got here. Ooh. 
Let's have a little mini tour here of just like my top shelf. So let's see, I have, oh, here's a good one. I have a Partega Spanish risotto, risotto. Uh, they have not made these in like 10 years. So this one is probably about 15 years old at this point. Uh, here is actually one of my Rocky Patels. This is a Sun Grown. Uh, these are actually really, really good if you never had one. Um, I have, here's a nice vintage Perdomo, 12 year aged. Um, so it's a nice 12 year aged cigar from Perdomo. The, I got Cusano 18 year. I think they discontinued these, unfortunately. Uh, but these were aged 18 years. They were very, very good. Oh, these are really, really good. The uh, the Rocky Patel Vintage uh, 2003s, they use a Cameroon wrapper from Africa. Big fan of Cameroon wrappers. They are delicious. Uh, this one, uh, let's see, Cigar 96. This, this cigar has probably been in my humidor for about four years at this point. And I think it's eight year aged before that. Uh, which countries are each of them from? I don't. There, there's a lot of mixed. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, blenders use tobaccos from all over. So you'll have you'll have stuff from. Um, so the main producers outside of Cuba are going to be Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Honduras. Those are kind of the big ones. But they grow, you'll get tobacco from, uh, well, South Africa, they grow Cameroon wrappers. So just the outside leaf uh, grown in Cameroon, South Africa. Uh, let's see, what other, there's some grown in Indonesia. Indonesia Sumatra is a, is a type of tobacco that a lot of people will use. Uh, Colombia, Brazil, uh, Peru, Mexico, uh, the United States. There's a lot of tobacco grown in the U.S. as well. Do I have Cohiba? I have the non... Um, I have a non-Cuban Cohiba, yes. Um, not uh, not in this tray, though. I'm not sure where it is. I have a couple... I have a couple Cohibas that they're not... They're not the Cuban Cohibas. They are probably Nicaraguan or... I think they're made in Nicaragua. The non-Cuban Cohibas are probably made in Nicaragua or, or Dominican Republic. But, uh, you know, Costa Rica grows some uh, tobacco as well. Uh, Philippines, but you don't see it that often. Um, I think it's cigar tobacco producers. Yeah, mostly Central America. Do all cigars taste the same? Not even close. No, they all taste completely different. Uh, depending where they're grown, how they're grown, how they are cured, how the tobacco is cured afterwards, and then how they blend it together. So like I, I actually roll my own cigars as well. And I use in the same cigar, uh, I use filler from Colombia, uh, Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Honduras. So I put four different countries, tobacco from four different countries in uh, inside. And then I use a uh, Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, which is grown here in the United States. And then I like to use the Cameroon, uh, sorry, the, the, the a Connecticut binder. And then I wrap that in a Cameroon uh, wrapper. So that's six country, six country blend is my personal blend that I do for myself. Um, then there are different parts of the plant. So, you know, tobacco grows in a, in a tall plant, um, usually somewhere around 12, 12 leaves or so, the type that they grow. And the, where it's on the plant has different characteristics as well. So the stuff that's uh, on the bottom uh, that's usually called uh, Seiko, which is the, usually the bottom row of leaves. They have been on the plant the shortest amount of time. They also shade it. They're also shaded because the other leaves above are kind of shading them. 
so they're not nearly as strong so they don't have as much they haven't had as much nutrients in them uh, and then you have the middle layer which is sometimes called velado or um, Seiko velado but oh crap what's the other what's the middle one viso viso is going to be in the in the middle and then the stuff at the top that's been on the plant the longest and has gotten the most sun and has the most nutrients drawn into it is called Lagero or Lajero. Uh, and that's gonna be your very strong leaf right there. It's gonna have uh, not a, it's gonna have a ton of different type of flavor, but it's also gonna have like the most nicotine. Uh, it's gonna be the thickest. It's not gonna burn as well as the Seiko off the bottom. So that's why they, they mix different parts of the plant. So not only will you mix different parts of the plant, you'll mix from different countries. You'll mix from different areas in the country as well. Uh, there are also different strains of tobacco as well. So there's, you know, different varieties of tobacco. Um, so it all tastes different depending on where it's grown, how it's grown, the specific type of tobacco plant that they're using. Um, yeah, so they all they can all taste very different. Some will be very sweet and have kind of a chocolate and coffee flavor. You can have some that taste kind of um, earthy with no sweetness at all. Um, yeah, the, uh, you'll have some that are nutty. You'll have some that are a mix of all of those things. Um, but really flavors that you'll see a lot of the time is going to be uh, cocoa, coffee, leather, different types of wood, um, some earthy, some spice like pepper, or um, um, I've had some that have a slight clove taste to them as well. Uh, Todd, do you get from Leaf Only? Yes, I do. And if you'd like to get from Leaf Only, I actually, I don't, I'm, I think it's still active. I should have a promo code active for TNT. Uh, leather, yes. Obviously, I've never tasted leather, but you know how you can like smell stuff and you know what it would taste like if you tasted it? You know, we, just with food. Like, if you smell something, if you smell your food, you have a good idea of what it will taste like before you even do. Um, that's so obviously, like, I've never tasted oak, but I'm pretty sure I know what it tastes like because I, I've smelled it before. Or leather, I know what leather smells like, so I have a good idea of what it would taste like. Uh, I've never eaten compost, but I'm pretty sure I know it would, or, or I've smelled it before, so I have an idea of what it would taste like. So, um, so it's just you know different different descriptors. Even though I've, you know, some of the stuff is not food per se, uh, but you know how you know you can smell stuff and you have a pretty good idea what it, what it would taste like, or at least a ballpark. So that's a that's a descriptor that a lot of people will use. Todd says, um, you're at, you're at Dark Fired Kentucky Cigar. I'm guessing you are on or smoking a Dark Fired Kentucky Cigar. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, uh, and then there's different, not only do you have different countries, different parts of the plant and different types of plants, uh, there's also how it gets cured afterwards as well. Um, so when it's picked, all tobacco has to be cured because it's full of um, different compounds that need to be kind of sweated out, off to, to make it um, smokable and palatable. Uh, so a lot of times what they'll do, they'll really they'll slow dry it in a barn, which then turns it brown. And then what they'll do, they'll actually stack it into piles uh, and kind of ferment the leaf. So that will remove some more um, volatile compounds that you don't want um, so there's different types of doing that there's also different uh, uh, aging techniques so as cigars age uh, various volatile compounds will eventually gas off um, and they'll leave the cigar and uh, usually that will mellow the cigar as well so that can play that's why I, I like really aged cigars 
um, tend to go very, uh, you know, a lot of vintage stuff. How's it going? I believe in you. Do you believe in me? <laughs> um, so, th yeah, there's a whole bunch of just how everything's put together is definitely going to change how how it tastes. For now, I do. Well, that's good. We're uh, good. Yes, it has been. A, well, it's been a really hot day where I am. I am not doing bad. We're we're talking about cigars and pipe tobacco and tea and video games and wrestling. If anybody wants to talk about wrestling, <laughs> when will you next smoke a cigar? Uh, I'll probably do a review. Maybe I'll film one tomorrow. I don't know. Tomorrow, I know I'm filming a review of cask number four by Kamoy's. Uh, it's a, this is a flake tobacco. It's mostly a Virginia tobacco. Um, as far as cigars go, I might film a cigar review tomorrow, maybe on Tuesday. If you head over to uh, my YouTube channel, um, if you just go to here, if you just go to www.tntobacco.com, are cigars much better than pipe? Uh, no, they're not. One's not better than the other. Uh, they, they're both can produce very unique flavors. Um, you know, pipe tobacco is the same way. It's all different types of tobacco grown in different places, processed different ways. So there's a lot of different varieties of tobacco that work in pipes that don't work in cigars. And there's a lot of cigar, uh, a lot of cigar leaf just doesn't work in pipes very well because it's usually thicker. So it doesn't burn very well when it's in a pipe. Uh, so it works better as a cigar. So you know, you get a lot of different flavors from different types of tobacco. So if you go to uh, TN Tobacco, so T T E A, the letter N, tobacco.com, that will direct you directly to my YouTube channel. I have a Pipes 101 series. I have a Cigar 101 series. So there's like a how to smoke, how to smoke a cigar, how to smoke a pipe. Um, but I'm going to be revamping all of those. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to be redoing all the how-to videos and whatnot and, and, and doing a lot of that explanation and all that fun stuff. But they're, they're different. They're, one's not better than the other. Um, like I said, I go back and forth all the time. Depends what, uh, what kind of mood I'm in um, and what I'm doing. So if I... I'll I'll do both while I'm driving, but usually I'll pick a cigar if I'm going to go for a drive or whatever. Uh, just because it's a little easier to deal with than having to relight a pipe all the time, especially when you're driving. Um, if I'm going to be playing golf, I'll take a cigar with me. If I'm going to be just hanging out by the pool, then I might go either way. Um, really depends what I feel like that day because they can vary vastly in different they have, have completely different flavor profiles across the spectrum of both, so just depends what I feel like. Just depends how I feel that day. But I mean, that's the same thing with with T. Is it Eric? Yes, I'm Eric. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, and it's the same thing with tea. Tea's the same way. Um, it's grown in different places. It's processed differently. It's aged differently. So that's you get the whole different things. Gotham Cigars House Blend. That is a review I did, but yes. Thing is that the most recent cigar that I reviewed? I can't remember. I don't think it's the most recent cigar I did. No, I did the Black Maduro a couple weeks ago from HC. But yes, I did. I did a review of the Gotham House Blend. Oh, 
but you found the right channel, most likely. <laughs> you should be able to see this live stream over there as well. Because I'm live streaming to that channel as well. Was that a good one? Yeah, it's not. it was not bad. Um, if I remember correctly... That was like four months ago. Um, if I remember correctly, it was not bad. It was a bit high in nicotine for me. Um, I think the draw was a little tight too. Flavor wise was fine. It wasn't, it wasn't anything great, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad either. I thought it was fine. There are a lot better ones, but uh, they wanted me to review their cigar. So they sent me some cigars. So I reviewed it for them. But yeah, I'll probably be doing a lot more um, pipe tobacco reviews. What's a ring gauge? Uh, a ring gauge is the diameter of the cigar. So if you see seven by 50, which is the size of the cigar, it's usually called the Churchill because that's the size of cigars that Churchill used to smoke. Um, so uh, a seven by 50 means it's seven inches long and the 50 is the, the ring gauge is in 64ths of an inch. So if it's a 50 ring gauge, it is 50 64ths of an inch in diameter. I don't know why they do it that way, but that's how they do it. Which cigars did Fidel Castro smoke? I have no idea why he smoked. That's a Google question. What cigars did Astro smoke. <laughs> uh, his favorite cigars were Cohibas, but he quit smoking decades ago. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I don't know if Cohibas are the best or not. Um, did Churchill smoke Cohibas? I don't know what Churchill smoked either. What did Churchill... He smoked Romeo e Julietas and uh, La Aroma de Cuba for his preferred cigars, which are both Cuban. Uh, they both also have uh, non-Cuban counterparts. Uh, their non-Cuban versions are good as well. Uh, especially the La Aroma de Cuba. They have some very good cigars that are non-Cubans for the American market. Had a dirt. The Palma is a throwout. Which Palma? Or is the or is that the actual line? Palma throwouts. Why doesn't America sell Cuban cigar? We don't. Uh, the embargo is still in place. We still have a trade embargo with Cuba going back to the '60s, when the. Uh, communist revolution happened in Cuba and we still have a uh, trade embargo on them. So that includes Cuban scars. I've been told that's what Fidel used to smoke. Palmas? Palmas is what Fidel used to smoke?
Was is Palma even a Cuban brand? Some of the Cuban, I mean, some of the brands of Cuba, I don't know. Obviously, there's Monte Cristo and. How come the UK can get them? Because the UK is not the US, and the UK does not have a trade embargo with Cuba. I don't know how many countries still have a trade embargo with Cuba other than the United States. It's been slowly easing over the years, but um, it's still, yeah. I don't know if it'll ever get, when it will get lifted, if it will ever get lifted. Do they still make ram cooks? I have no idea what you're talking about. Can't you visit Cuba then? Um, I am not sure what the rules are as far as Americans visiting Cuba. Uh, I don't think unless you are of Cuban descent that you can go directly to Cuba from the US. You would have to travel to another country before going to Cuba. So you'd have to travel to, like, say, Mexico, and then go to Cuba? So I despise... I don't have any thought towards Cuba one way or the other. Their government sucks. I don't support their government, which I also don't support their tobacco trade, because basically the government steals all the money from the farmers like the farmers make jack because it's all taken by the by the government so basically all their crops are taken by the government so i'm not a huge fan of that that that's kind of douchey so even if i could get cuban cigars i probably would not support i probably would not bother buying cuban cigars under the current way of how the tobacco trade works in Cuba, because basically it's government run, and the farmers and all of them get completely screwed. Do I think America should be communist? No. That sounds like a fucking horrible idea. Yeah, I don't know what the what the restrictions are for going to Cuba. I'm pretty sure you, have, you do have to fly through a, you have to travel through a different country though. And then you have to travel back to that other country, back to a different country before coming back to the US. Uh, so you could, you're allowed to bring Cuban cigars back. Uh, There's a max amount. Do I think there will be a ban on guns in the United States? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't know why there would be. Rum crooks. I have no idea if rum crooks are being made. You'll have to Google that one. There's a school shooting again. That I don't think that'll have anything to do with it. School shootings are just the media loves them, so that's why you always hear about them. As the old saying goes, if it bleeds, it leads.
You never heard that saying, if it bleeds, it leads? It's an old news saying. If it ble if there's if violence, it, violence leads on the newscast. So if there's anything that violence that happens, that's that's what you put first on the newscast because that's the first thing to to lead the the newscast with, or it's the you know the first headline on the newspaper or you know, for, yeah, the headline of in the magazine. So that's where that saying comes. If it bleeds, it leads. That's how you sell news and newspapers. Because everybody loves a good story about violence. Has there been any shootings in New Hampshire? Um, we have almost, we have like the least restrictive gun laws in the country in New Hampshire. And we have like a little ridiculously low murder rate. Uh, I don't think there's been any, there has not been a mass shooting in New Hampshire as long as I can remember. Um, we haven't had any school shootings. Well, we've had a couple school shootings. One of them, well, I wouldn't really call them school shootings because one of them was just a kid killing himself. We've had a few suicides in school. Uh, I remember a school shooting when I was in elementary school. One person was hurt and that was it. But nothing massive has happened in, in New Hampshire. And we have, like I said, we have the... We, ha we are the state with the least restrictive gun laws in the entire country and probably have more guns per person than most states. We have less restrictive laws than Texas. Everybody thinks Texas has like the least restrictive gun laws in the country. Not even close. Texas has actually some pretty strict gun laws comparatively to other other states. But for some reason, they always like to use Texas because it's very rednecky. Are you allowed grenades? Mm. Only under very specific licensing. Um, I guess you could technically get grenades. Uh, very difficult, though. What for hunting? Grenades? You don't use grenades for hunting? <laughs> Sorry, there's a slight delay between me and, and the chat. I mean, using grenades for hunting might be a little overkill. <laughs> Grenade could kill a deer easily. Yeah, but you have nothing left to eat after it. You have to round up all the pieces. That would be... That's just making a mess. <laughs> Well, I mean, it'd be blown apart, so it's a lot easier if you have a completely intact deer. You have to have really good aim for grenade <laughs> to kill a deer with a grenade. That'd be really, really hard. And you'd have to get really close, and they'd probably run away before you get there. There are a lot of different types of grenades. <laughs> yeah, like a regular like grenade, yeah, could definitely uh blow it to pieces. They're pretty powerful.
What else is going on out there, people? Todd, you redact a lot of re you re retract a lot of messages. Am I into wrestling? Yes. I have a podcast called That's Wrestling, YouTube channel called That's Wrestling. Uh, I follow AEW New Japan. Primarily. I keep up on what's going on in WWE, but I don't watch it. Uh, I semi have an idea what's going on in Impact, MLW, and ROH as well. Um, but I don't watch those consistently. AEW New Japan, I watch it pretty much everything before. Do I think wrestling is fake? Fake as in predetermined and all that? Uh, of course it is. Basically, live theater um, and TV. This is a very strange question. What happened to Chris Benoit? Uh, he killed his kid and wife and then killed himself. I'm pretty sure that's uh, pretty widely known. Why did he do that? That we don't know. Uh, there's a lot of different speculation about that. Uh, when they examined his brain, uh, he had so many concussions that his brain looked like that of a 80 year old Alzheimer's patient. Um, could have been roid rage. It could have been a whole bunch of other things. Um, but there wasn't like a note or anything. Uh, he just snapped for whatever reason. Like, yeah, his brain was so damaged, though, he could have had dementia. Something could have just happened. Um, nobody will ever know exactly why it happened. That is true, that's what Vince McMahon said. That's what everybody said. Uh, when his brain was sent off to um, specialists. I don't really trust anything Vince McMahon says, so you have to hear it from another source to believe it's actually true. What about Owen Hart? Again, that's a pretty well-known case at this point. Something they cheaped out on using a rigging crew that had no business doing a rigging. They used gear that was not used for climbing. And the quick release should never have been used. And the quick release released and he fell a very long distance and how was that? Though with that, they should have stopped the show. The police should have come in because that was technically a crime scene at that point. If somebody dies through unnatural causes, the police should be investigating. But they basically... They kept going and basically disrupted a crime scene. That's 
something that should not have happened. That was that should have been immediately turned into a crime scene um, when Owen Hart died. All basically all unnatural deaths are are you know investigated by police in this country. And for whatever reason, that one was not and was not immediately like stopped. It's like if somebody died, uh, that is a crime scene or somebody gets seriously injured, even serious injuries like that are investigated by investigators a lot of time. That should have been completely invested by the cops that night. That show should have stopped immediately. Yeah, Todd, did you know that they've been trying to do like a a Vince McMahon biofilm and like it would be impossible because you never know what's actually true. It's not like he's going to tell you anything without a spin. Do I think Eddie Guerrero was bad? Meaning like a bad person or a bad wrestler? He died of heart failure. Uh, he did a lot of drugs, which probably didn't help, but he didn't OD at the time. It was just heart failure after years of um, years of abuse. I think he had an undiagnosed heart condition anyways. I think his heart was bigger than it was supposed to be, but it was undiagnosed, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Guerrero was an excellent wrestler. Yeah, that one that one was a bummer. Guerrero passing away, that was a that really sucked. Like he had gotten clean, but then he ends up dying kind of kind of like the after effects of just all the stress that got put on his heart throughout those years. There for a while I thought was that chair Shane took that night. I'm not sure what that means. I like China as a person or as a wrestler. The wrestler, she wasn't that great. She's all right. I mean, the, there were in WWE at that time, or as WWF at the time, um, there were not very good female wrestlers. It's not that there weren't good female wrestlers on the planet at that time. They didn't look at the value of the ability to wrestle in WWF at the time. You just had to be a hot blonde chick for the most part. Uh, China obviously being the exception because she was huge. Um, she seemed like an okay person. Uh, as far as wrestling talent, she wasn't that great. Chair shot to the back of the head on that pay-per-view? Or was that... I don't re I don't particularly remember that pay-per-view. I mean obviously China kind of got screwed with everything that happened at the end of a wrestling career and then she got it you know then she had drug problems and all that fun stuff so that's a bit of a downer
man, it is late on a Sunday night. But sulfur, dude, it's gotta be what, like 4 a.m. where you are? Don't remember the pay per view, but I remember there was a skit where he got hit in the back of the head with a chair. There was a lot of shots to the head with chairs during that era. Not a good idea. Unprotected shots. There are ways to safely take chair shots, but a lot of times they did not do it very safely. It never got a hand up or anything like that. I got a moth flying in midair. Anything else going on there, guys? I might wrap it up here soon. Not that I have to go to work in the morning. Well, I haven't eaten dinner, so I might actually make dinner and then go to bed. It's uh, 11 p.m. already. Get up and start making some videos. I have a sputtering lighter, so the first thing I'm going to do is how to properly refill a lighter, because a lot of people don't know how to properly refill a butane lighter. So that's the video I'm going to film first. I think this pipe is pretty spent here. Get some of the ash out of here. I don't remember if you remember that yeah, shot. Yeah, they did uh during that time there were a lot of unprotected headshots. Unprotected chair shots. And I love how they, like, claim, oh, we didn't know any better. It's like, we've known, you know, taking shots to the head is not good for you for the entire length of human history. Like, I'm pretty sure humans have known for a very long time, if you get punched really hard in the head, you get knocked out. I don't know why they wouldn't think that's probably not good for you. Like, what did they think was happening? <laughs> you know? All right, Todd and Sulphur, I think you guys are the only ones left. So uh, if you guys don't have anything else, I'm probably going to wrap it up here in a couple minutes. Don't forget to sub, and hopefully I will have... Definitely have to work on setting up a shop. So t-shirts will be available for... 
Whiskey and Tobacco, as well as Vets Wrestling. Uh, sent them off to the printer a couple hours ago. So hopefully I get a price list back tomorrow and then I will know exactly what I'm going to be doing. Hopefully they are reasonable uh, and I can keep the prices low. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks for hanging out with me, everybody. Man, this was a long one. Jeez, it was like three hours. Well, good to know. I wasn't sure if it was the uh, voice to text. I was freaking it out. I got ya. Got ya understand now. Not a problem. Usually I can figure out what you're saying. It's all good. All right. So uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. And uh, be sure to follow the channel. A bunch of stuff will be coming out on the YouTube. And I'll try to do some live streams. I'll be doing more gaming live streaming over on Twitch and the like. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. And I will see you next time. See you later,